No nonsense know-how here again, and today is going to be a follow-up to a previous video I did on this cedar fence behind me. I'll plug that video in right here or there. And basically, we're going to run through some of the comments, answer questions, but most importantly, I'm going to show you how it's holding up two years later, show you what the gaps are, and you know what? Let's just dive right into it. Not sure if the sun's going to stay out, so real quick, I want to note that when the sun is out, it looks much more vibrant, and sometimes this camera doesn't really pick up with the reds, but that's, uh, that's what it looks like right now. All right, so two years later, I would say that the TWP 1500 stain is holding up pretty good. It does have slight graying in a few areas, like you can see a little bit right there, but for two years, that's not bad. Of course, this is vertical surfaces. If you're on horizontal surfaces, it's not always uh, gonna hold up that great. And more importantly though, check out these gaps. You can't see through them at all. They've stayed nice and butted tight. A couple of them are starting to get open, but a lot of people were asking me with the gaps, did you butt them tight? Absolutely, I butted them all tight. And these were, I dried the boards out for about two weeks in my carport before I even laid the stain on them. I will certainly end up with gaps in the future though, because this cedar gate I put up, you can see these got some pretty big gaps. And when I built this, these were all butted tight. This is a little bit older though than the fencing. And you can see on this side, I'm starting to get a few gaps too. You might also notice where my cat likes to climb over the fence. It's getting pretty, pretty cheesed up there, but it's no big deal. But on the other side is another great example. This is uh, the fence that I showed in the other video. And this was put up, I think, roughly six months before I put mine. And when he originally put it, it was, uh, you could see these were all just sopping wet. And they had a nice green color to them. But then within a few months, he, he ended up with pretty large gaps throughout. And this actually held up pretty good considering. Um, you can see, if you look down at some of the boards, did get kind of kind of kind of cattywampus. Uh, Somebody also noted that he had these streaks going down and he didn't use, uh, these, again, they were store-bought, so they didn't use galvanized nails. So I ended up kind of with those streaks running down. Uh, of course, uh, about a year ago, he did stain this one on the outside though. And, you know, so that looks pretty good. He, this was like a poly stain. I do want to say I got nothing against doing it this way. In fact, it really makes a lot more sense. You go to the store, grab some panels, throw them up, and you're done. But I just, I like to do things crazy, the crazy hard way. Hardest way you could possibly do them, right? I did just notice, looks like he needs a missing a screw holding this one on, so I'll probably zip one in there for him. Speak of the devil, here he is. Let's see if we can get him to climb over this fence and show you, show us what he does. Go ahead. Go get it. Go get it. He's just lazy right now. Well, let's make him climb it anyway. This was like, boom. That's his spot. So I'd say it's holding up pretty good so far. Now let's read and answer a few of the comments. Don Andrews asked, Hi, I was wondering, did you run a string line from the first post to the last post at the top to keep all the posts level? Yes, but not the entire distance. Because uh, if you go a span of 100 feet or so, you're, even if you pull that string real tight, you're going to get some kind of sag in your string line. So I ran it to just behind the coop, midway, and then yeah, I ran a line on the top to level the tops of the posts, set those uh, straight and true, and then a line on the bottom as well. So that way, even though I was using a uh, level bubble on my posts, I could visually see that uh, the fence was not leaning any which way. But I wouldn't get too caught up with getting your posts at the exact height. Just get them set and then you can always go back with a pipe cutter or sawzall and cut them flush. The rough end's going to get covered up anyway. Chris G, great video Lil Dicky. Love your fence and your wraps. I get a lot of Lil Dicky comments. I, I don't see the resemblance that much, but it's cool. Matt said something interesting here. For more overkill action, you could cut a 30 degree slant on the runner to force rainwater off and further increase the fence life. I actually really like that idea. You wouldn't want to do that if you were using pressure treated because you'd be cutting away the chemicals. But on cedar, yeah, I don't see why not. That is where the rails usually rot out, right on the top there. You know, you get the sediment build up in here. So if you cut a 30 degree slope on this, yeah, it would cause all leaves and debris to, to wash away. Would it really increase the longevity? I'm not sure. Jason Ha 82, love the bottom board for weed eating so you don't destroy your pickets. Yeah, that's definitely a must. And you can see in the chicken run area here, it doesn't grow grass, all the mud kind of goes on that when it rains. And, and as you go down, 
you see where the grass grows into it, it actually matches up perfectly. And you can actually see where my weed whacker's been hitting it. You also get five or six inches of extra height out of the fence. Logo said, uh, man, that's dope. How many pickets in a section? Uh, him and a few other people were asking about that. The pickets are five and a half inches wide, so it really depends on what your sections are going to be if you're doing six foot or eight foot. Just ran the numbers, so for an eight foot section, it would be 17.45 pickets, and for a six foot, it would be 13.09. Uh, of course, that depends if you leave gaps or not as well. Life Hacks asked, do you have a vid of how you built the gate, and how wide is that beast? Yes, I'll plug a link to it right here, and it's about 12 foot 8 inches wide. Marie Murphy said, just wondering, the clamps that tie the 2x4s to the metal, how would you adjust for pitch? It seems there would be no wiggle room. There's a lot of different styles of these clamps, but when you tighten that set screw, you do have some rock back and forth. You can always shim it too. Uh, and then also, if you can't get that straight, you could just put shims beneath the 2x4s on the bottom if you needed to bring it up for pitch. Tom McBride left a long comment. Um, two issues with this otherwise bulletproof fence. One, he said, put wood stain on the ends of the boards. I did do that, and a couple people also asked, hey, after you cut the bottoms off, did you restain them? Yes, I did. Uh, so, and number two, he said, the stainless steel screws are great against the wood, but against the galvanized steel, the brackets, they're going to you're gonna have galvanic corrosion. I think that's extremely unlikely to occur. However, it did cross my mind as I was putting this together. So when I, before I put each of these in, I dabbed a little bit of grease on there. I don't know if you could see that. So that should uh, reduce the chances of that ever happening. Tom Henry and a few other people asked, why not cap the top of it? I actually did think of that. However, I wanted to keep this fence as low profile as possible because when I back my boat in here or my truck camper, I mean, you have like three inches on each side to spare. It's really close. So if I put some kind of roof or cap on here, uh, it just would have certainly increased the longevity, life of the uh, fence pickets, but it would stick out more and I didn't want that. Of course, I, I guess I could use, use like some aluminum C-channel flashing and go over top, but that might look a little ugly. Darth Raider said schedule 20 would have been fine. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been fine, but with that fixed schedule 40, spend the extra money, it's going to last a lot longer, never rot out, and have a lot more wind resistance in case of hurricanes to come through. Favorite comment right here, Glorioski. There are worse ways to waste time. Yes, certainly worse ways to waste your time and money as well. Get over yourself. No gaps between the boards. Issues with that, and a lot of other people, Johnny Cortez asked about, did I leave gaps between or butt them? We already touched on that, but no, I had no problems with, after I put this all together, butted tight after rain and humidity came through, uh, they didn't buckle or cup or anything like that. And you can see the original stain color on that side. So it was much, much more red than it is now. It's certainly fading out. Pagan Wizard said, uh, at a minute and 40, you said that section of fence needs to be redone. All it needs is be pressure washed and resealed. And he was referring to the old section of fence I had in the back of my property, which now I tore that down and replaced it because it was uh, totally falling apart. I also did like a gate that kind of blends in as a fence, but the same style as the uh, one in the front of my property, four inch schedule 40 and uh, cedar pickets on a fabricated steel frame. Very heavy duty, and it's 10 foot span, and you can stand on the end of it. It doesn't sag, and it still swings. Fresco, how is that shell Shuggy Bond holding up, and would you use TWP 1500 again? I'd say it's holding up pretty good. You can see the dirt gets on it, so it turns brown, and then, of course, your weed whacker chews into it as well. But uh, I mainly did it to try to get some extra longevity out of the cedar, so we'll see if behind here if it actually does anything. And the TWP 1500 would definitely use it again. It does fade over time, but for vertical surfaces up and down, it holds up very well, very happy with it. And reapplication is a breeze. You could just spray this with like a fine mist out of a sprayer and then wipe it down or just use a cloth with it and soak it in these penetrating oils. I mean, it's just so easy to reapply them versus like a film forming stain or a poly. So it'd probably take me like a half hour to do this entire fence. Easy peasy. And I think we'll wrap it up there. I just wanted to make this quick rapid fire video to answer some of the comments and questions from the previous video because you know what? That video broke 100,000 views. There goes the squirrel. 
<laughs> Maybe it's uh, my old squirrel shake. It's become less, um, you know, used to humans, it seems like, is no really... But did I mention 100,000 views? I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. Most of my videos get like 400 views. So if a video takes off and it brings some value to the platform, I just got to make a follow-up and touch on it again. I'll certainly be doing another follow-up probably 10 or 20 years from now uh, if this thing's still sitting here and a hurricane doesn't rip it down. So consider subscribing and ringing that bell if you want to see that. And also consider dropping a thumbs up and a comment down below. Who knows, maybe you'll get lucky and I'll read your comment in my future video, especially if you bring up a good, valid, solid point. Listen, I'm gonna run now. Hopefully I answered all your questions. Hopefully this video brought some value. This is Chris Brown here, no nonsense, no how, and I hope to see you again. Oh, Turbo, I'm sorry I tried making you climb that fence, buddy. Uh, would've been cool though. We'll get you on camera next time.